Hello, it's me again, but this time I'm here to talk about something completely different. Um, if you've been following developments in digital dictionary publishing in recent years, you may have noticed that there's a new trend on the scene, lexicographic APIs. Um, a lexicographic API is a machine readable interface which uh, a dictionary publisher makes available on the internet for machines, not humans, but machines to come in and to read an online dictionary and to obtain data from it and to use the data for whatever purpose. So lexicographic APIs are a relatively new phenomenon, uh, but it seems that in recent years, it seems like everybody is doing it. Um, it it seems that all the big players are at it, you know, the likes of Oxford University Press and K Dictionaries and Macmillan and so on. They, 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 they all seem to be publishing uh, dictionary APIs in recent years. But because the, the idea, the trend is so new, I felt that it hasn't really been kind of captured or acknowledged yet in lexicographic uh, conferences and publications and so on. I mean, yes, there have been demos and presentations about individual APIs here and there, but there hasn't really been a contribution yet that would somehow capture or summarize the trend as a whole. So I thought, uh, why not me? <laughs> and um, here's my attempt to summarize what I think is happening in lexicographic APIs right now. Uh, so first of all, let's, uh, let's ask ourselves the question, why is everybody suddenly publishing APIs? Um, it's obviously one of the ways in which the dictionary publishing industry is responding to this ongoing digital disruption that has been ravaging the industry for almost two decades now. You know the story. They're not um, selling so many printed dictionaries anymore. Instead of that, they're making dictionaries available on the internet. They're making some money from that, but not as much as they used to from paper. Right. So obviously they're looking for alternative ways to monetize their content. And one such possibility is that they, the dictionary publishers would redefine themselves as kind of application agnostic content providers, right? As someone who is basically licensing content to other companies who are then using it for whatever purposes and <clears throat> they're generating revenue that way. So if you want to function as a successful uh, uh, ag application agnostic content provider, you have to have some application agnostic content, which is content which is capable of uh, being used for many different purposes. That by itself could be a bit of a pressure point for dictionary publishers or dictionary APIs, because when you think about it, most of the dictionaries that exist today have been written, have been created with only one specific use case in mind, which is that a human user will look at them, right? So the dictionaries that we have today, they don't really lend themselves very easily to being processed by machines and then being reused for many different uh, varied purposes, right? Um, but that's not stopping many dictionary publishers from trying anyway, and uh, one of the ways that they're trying to do that is that they have been offering APIs which provide kind of on-demand access to, uh, to their data for their customers in machine-readable formats. So what's an API anyway? Uh, when you think about it, an API is like a user interface, but it's not a user interface between humans and machines. It's an interface between two machines or between two pieces of software. So a user interface is the things that you see on your screen and text boxes you type into and so on. And that's how humans communicate with software. But when two instances of software communicate with each other, they use something called an API, an application programming interface. APIs have been becoming very popular on the internet in, let's say, the last decade or so. Um, not, now I'm talking about the internet in general, not just lexicography. And we've seen the emergence of a bunch of, let's say, best practices for how to design a good online API. Good online APIs today usually ride on the same infrastructure as the human readable web. So there's the HTTP protocol and you have uh, requests and responses flying between clients and servers. 
except the data which is being exchanged between clients and servers is not human readable web pages, but machine readable data. And that data in modern online APIs is usually encoded in JSON, right? That's the format people usually use in APIs. This is another pot potential pressure point for dictionary publishers because dictionary data usually lives in XML natively, right? So if you're somebody who's thinking about uh, making a dictionary API available, you need to ask yourself the question, okay, am I going to make the data available in the XML that I have, or am I going to convert it into JSON, or what am I going to do, right? So uh, later on, I'm going to show you examples of how different APIs answer this question differently. Um, a typical dictionary API uh, offers more or less the same kind of fun functionality that the dictionary website does, right? Except it does it in a machine readable way. So there's usually a way that the machine client can come in and perform a search, just supply a short piece of text and obtain some list of results. And then there's a way that the machine client can come in and just request an individual entry by giving the ID of the entry, for example, right? The, as, uh, as I said, the data usually flows in JSON. And what most dictionary API publishers are doing is that they make it possible for you to come in and sign up for an account and start using using the API as a third party software developer, uh, trying it out, experimenting, building prototypes, and you don't even have to pay, provided you're not using the API for a commercial purpose and provided you are not exceeding usage quotas, right? So uh, there's, uh, and you, you, they only expect you to start paying for using the API if you exceed certain quotas or if you start using it for something commercial. And now I'd like to take you on a short, short tour of uh, dictionary APIs that I've surveyed for this presentation. It's not necessarily a hugely representative survey, but I think I've covered all the major players. Uh, my criteria for deciding whether an API should be included in my survey or not is that I'm only including APIs which uh, give you access to a proper kind of professionally produced human edited richly structured dictionaries, right? Um, so it has to be an API where you can actually sort of get an entire dictionary entry with, you know, head words and senses and usage examples and things like that. So the first one I need to mention is definitely Lexicala API, uh, um, an API published by or made available by K Dictionaries. Uh, this is a very nice API. I would hold it up as an example of good practice. Uh, it, all the data flows in XML, uh, sorry, in JSON. Uh, it's all very well documented. Lots of lots of uh, bilingual and monolingual and bilingual content in many many languages. So Lexicala. Uh, Oxford Dictionaries has a, also has a very nice API for some of their monolingual and bilingual dictionaries. Also, everything is in JSON. You can sign up for a free account, start using it. Uh, interestingly, Oxford University Press has two dictionary APIs. Uh, then they have this other one for their, uh, for their learner's dictionary or their learner's dictionaries. Uh, and even more interestingly, this API is completely different. Uh, what the, and it's a bit exceptional in that the entries it gives you are either either in XML or in HTML, but not in JSON, which is unusual, right? So for some reason, OUP has two dictionary APIs. <laughs> uh, then Macmillan obviously is another major player, and it also has a dictionary API. Uh, this one is a bit difficult to figure out because there's actually no publicly available documentation. There's just a single web page on their website which says that the API exists but you have to sign up first and then they say they will send you all information. So it's a bit mysterious how that actually works. Cambridge University Press has an API for their English Learner's Dictionary. And this again is a member of the small minority of dictionary APIs that serve entries in either XML or HTML, but not in JSON. Uh, now, going outside the English speaking world, Pons is a German dictionary publisher and they have a very nice API for accessing their bilingual dictionaries. Uh, then Merriam Webster, the American dictionary publisher, has an API for their monolingual English dictionaries. Uh, they, it, 
uh, it's interesting to see the, the URL that they've registered for this, dictionaryapi.com, as if they were the only dictionary API in the world, but okay. And uh, yeah, they serve data in JSON, they serve the entries in JSON, but it's some kind of a weird JSON with uh, just kind of interspersed with some sort of a home-baked XML-like markup, which I haven't really been able to figure out. Um, uh, then Collins, the publisher of the legendary Collins Co-Build dictionary has an API which provides access to Collins Co-Build and a couple of other dictionaries. But again, this is one which is difficult to figure out because they have no publicly available documentation you need to sign up first, which I didn't do. <laughs> and last but not least, Abi, the, the Russian dictionary publisher has an API for their bilingual dictionaries, bilingual with Russian. Uh, they serve the entries in JSON, but the JSON is hugely, hugely complex and I haven't been able to figure it out. So that's been a very brief survey of uh, sort of the major dictionary APIs that exist at the moment, as far as I'm concerned. If I've left out anyone important, please let me know. And now I'd like to see if we can extract some common themes from uh, what we've seen. The one question that you can ask as a, as a developer interested in using these APIs is to see how developer friendly are they? You know, How easy or difficult do they make it for me to come in and start using them? Most of the dictionary entries that we've seen are relatively developer friendly, I, I have to say. They definitely, all of them follow the best practices that exist for uh, online APIs in this day and age. Uh, most of them have very good publicly available documentation. Most of them allow you to sign up for a free account and start experimenting. We've seen a few, we've seen a few exceptions which don't. Um, Potential problem for dictionary APIs is that each of them is different, right? So uh, they, the functionality they make available can be slightly different from one API from one API to another. They organize things a little differently. So the structure of the uh, requests and the responses that fly between the client and the server is a little bit different in each API. And obviously the schemas of the entries themselves are very different. Um, so if I'm a, a developer who wants to build an application that reads data from many different dictionary APIs, then I need to treat each API individually, and that, that, that would be a bottleneck. And the most interesting question I would like to ask the, the API publishers themselves is how is it working out for you so far? You know, are you seeing many developers signing up wanting to use your API? Uh, and do you know what they're using your data for? And uh, the most important question, is this even actually generating revenue for you? Uh, I'd say most of the publishers would say that it's too early yet. And it seems like most of the publishers are perfectly willing to leave it open for another little while and see where it goes, see if it catches on, see if developers sign up, see if developers begin developing interesting applications and generating revenue or not. So it's early days yet, it's a very new trend and we'll have to just wait and see where it goes. Uh, that's pretty much the end of my presentation. That's all I wanted to say about dictionary APIs. One last thing, I've put up a page on my website where I've listed the APIs that I've reviewed in this presentation. So you can have a look at that if you want to uh, sort of look more closely at some of them. And I plan to keep it updated in the near future or in the, in the midterm future as the dictionary APIs landscape evolves. Okay, that's all I wanted to say about dictionary APIs and uh, thank you for your attention.